Hello, Leo. Welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. I do not know exactly where your reading is going to go, Leo. It's it's kind of strange. I mean, I see, right? I see some of it, but you pulled out decks that I don't use very often. Um, I was actually considering sort of folding the whole thing up and starting again when Jupiter the cat left directly on the table, which he usually doesn't do. He usually takes a little sort of a side route to get here and plopped his fuzzy butt right in the middle of the reading and then just sat there for quite some time. <laughs> so it seemed like, mm, leave it. Read what is there. So we're, we're going to read what is here. Now, you may want, when you're done with watching this reading, to watch the Cancer reading, which came out yesterday. I'm actually recording this yesterday. It will come out on Saturday. But there is some, there's some kind of connection. And maybe it isn't so much Leo and Cancer, I mean it's Leo and Cancer, but more like the sun and the moon. And fire and water. So this first card is this Four of Wands from the Surrealist Tarot. Find a place where you can see it. That's where you can see it. There it is. So you see there's these four trees and they're linked up at the top. And there is a fountain there in the center, but all of the ground around the trees looks rather dry. There's no grass growing anywhere. Although there is kind of this, right, there's this sense of water and there's this person in a boat, but it's kind of dried up. And what I want to say is that if, if the trees were unhooked, if this was, right, if these wands, the four wands were released, that something would change in this landscape. Now the Four of Wands traditionally is uh, an Aries card, the two, three, four of wands. That does make me think perhaps Chiron is in the third decan of Aries right now. So there is that, this possibility of healing in that space, the possibility of healing through fire, through inspiration. Now at the bottom of the deck, the kind of hidden underlying, is this very interesting Six of Pentacles card. And you see that these people, and they're lining up to have their brains put in. <laughs> Their little walnut brains put in. So this always speaks to me about societal programming and conformity. Um, you know, this dude actually has this apple happening in his brain, but it's going to get replaced by the walnut. And in this deck, there is a card that has um, an apple as the face with the hat and, and everything underneath, and it's the Wheel of Fortune card. And then there's this arm sort of sticking out over here that seems like it might be somebody who's trying to escape. So there is an energy here of 
of leaving conformity, of leaving the pattern. And this might, it might not even be, you know, of course every great society has uh, an effect on everything, but it may be more for you about uh, your familial patterns, your, you know, conforming with your family, or even conforming with expectations that you have. What you think you should be doing. We don't like that word should. Sometimes it escapes <laughs> from me. But we don't mm, should. We don't like the word should. Now the visible underlying is justice, which also has today this kind of sense of conformity, right? All of these people are going up the steps and as they go up the steps, they're, right, the, the trees are growing on top of their heads, the branches are growing on top of their heads. So there is, you do have Right, you have an understanding that perhaps what you've been doing, you know, this seems almost because it's, you know, it's sort of visible, right? It's, it's, um, you know, like growing your hair, right? And all of these people start out with short hair and then they end up with this long hair. Then maybe this is the ways that you see yourself fitting in. You know, perhaps the way you dress or, you know, more, more surface things. But with this Six of Pentacles underneath, there is more to it than that. You may not realize how deep this, um, I really, I don't like the word programming, actually, because it, right, it makes us sound like computers and we're not. These learnings that you had. Because we do, you know, we, we want to be loyal to our culture, to our society, to our family, to the way things are done. And so we, we learn these things. And we may learn them really happily when we're children. And it isn't only until later that we discover how deep this goes. Fortunately, right underneath the Justice card is both the Ace of Cups, so your, right, your personal grail, that which you know to be true, your heart space is here, and right below that is the sun. Leo's guide. Uh, in tarot, the sun is actually associated with the sun uh, and strength with Leo. But when it shows up in a Leo reading, then it is the sun, the astrological sun. The Leo sun. And I really like this <laughs> sun card with this sunny side up egg. And we do have the naked baby um, except on, on this flaming horse. And below the sun actually we have temperance here in this temple of seeing. So something, something seen, something becoming more clear, uh, a clarity around your own motivations, coming to understand why you've had certain motivations, are they really yours? So we have the King of Cups 
And at the bottom of this deck in the Unseen is the Knight of Cups. So it may be that you have seen this king, this need for um, emotional maturity, a need for perhaps even emotional control, for emotional intelligence. But what you haven't seen is this need, this desire for romance. And that, that word came out in Cancer yesterday. That may be a link. Um, you know, Venus spent four months in Leo last summer when she retrograded. And now she's in Cancer. So there is right, this connection as she comes back around to you, Leo. She, she spent four months with you learning the ways of, of Leo, or I should say absorbing the ways of Leo because she has been there many times before. And then taking, taking those messages around through the rest of the Zodiac. And now she is moving through Cancer. And by the time we get to mid-July, I think, I don't know exactly when she moves into Leo, but she will be back. She does not have a retrograde this year. She will not retrograde until next year. So this, right, this romantic um, and all of the things that go with it that, that we, you know, we sort of frown on that. We think of it as uh, maybe as gullible, as childish, as um, <clears throat> I don't know what word I'm looking for, but you know, the, the domain of the rom-com that it's not real or that, uh, you know, if you're a woman and you succumb to romance that you're somehow letting the side down. But I want to say that romance is bigger than that. You know, it's not just flowers on Valentine's Day or rom-coms. It's an entire way of living. The romantic view, right, of nature and of life. Right? Nature was the first romantic. There were flowers here on earth long before there were people. Below this King of Cups, we have both the Ace and the Ten of Swords. And below that is the Sun again. as well as the Eight of Wands. So from, right, from the 10, we finish, we leave the corpse and take up the new sword, the new way of thinking that is more fluid, that has more water. We have this Nine of Pentacles and it's, right, the earth around this tree is all cracked. I never really sort of noticed, I mean, you know, I saw it, but it didn't really occur to me to think about it. I mean, this is meant to be, you know, this fulfillment, the nine of pentacles, mastery of the physical realm. In the Waite Smith tarot, we have the, the woman in her garden, you know, confident, independent, wealthy, the ground is parched. Perhaps this is too much focus, maybe on earthly, earthy things at the expense of emotion and imagination, at the expense of emotional needs that you have. And so that, you know, maybe you have this tree filled with pentacles. You have 
lots of physical resources. But there's a parched feeling. And we have the Ten of Cups. And, you know, for the first time, this is coming up in an unusual way for me as, right, these, although these cups are overflowing, they're doing so in a trickle. This is a trickle of overflow. Um, there's a different deck, the Wildwood Tarot, where there are, where in the Ten of Vessels, it really is overflowing. There's a big waterfall of, you know, water that's coming down and overflowing in all the cups. But here there is a sense that, you know, it's just a trickle extra. There's not a lot of extra. There may be just enough. And so if this has been, if this has been true for you, if you, if you have felt parched, um, and I am actually feeling, I feel really thirsty this morning. So there is something, something to To feeling arid, feeling parched of, of love, of whimsy, of joy, of beauty, of romance in your life. That it's time, it's time to look at that. And here, so here we have the Hermit. The sign actually on your other side. Virgo, going inward to check out your star, the thing that you want to be following. And that was just 1717 on the counter. I'm doing all kinds of things I don't normally do talking about the time and I got decks I don't usually use and the cat was sitting on the cards and I'm thirsty. I don't know. There's all this, these things that don't normally happen. Following this, this star. And then also this four of swords. And I was thinking, you know, there's this dark sort of bit by her ears and, you know, it's just the inner part of her ears, but I was thinking of it as earplugs. So she is not only, you know, in meditation or contemplation, she's put some earplugs in to keep out whatever is trying to attract her attention, trying to distract her from her own inner knowing. And I don't, I actually don't think that necessarily that, that, you know, you need to meditate for hours every day. I think this is just about, you know, clearing out other things, you know, uh, social media, if you do that, the news, um, you know, maybe even more YouTube videos. Um, books even, and just thinking about what you believe, what do you think is right? Just you, not with society, not any of that stuff. Kind of discovering what you believe. You know, what would you say was true if it didn't matter what anybody else anywhere ever thought about it. So we have this moon dancer card, right? This exuberance. And there's a, this is the moon deck. So there's that, this, we've had the sun now twice. And now we have the moon deck with a bunch of moons going on. Um, below this is the dark moon. 
the, the quiet contemplative space. Um, and then the bottom of the deck is this glimmering moon, which looks like a combination of the sun and the moon with this orange color, all of this light, this, this fire and water mixing into this gold waterfall. So there's something, something about the sun and the moon, um, that which is your, right, where you want to express your light, your, you know, what shines in you, how you want to be seen, and then all of your feelings and what, um, you know, your emotional needs. And how can these two things be more integrated? And so we have this Moonstruck card. And this, right, this is contemplating your moon. Contemplating what it is that you feel, what it is that uh, lights up your feelings, what it is that makes you feel loved, how you would like to be loved, you know, what, are, what your emotional needs are. And then interestingly, this lucky star is actually coming through kind of like a sheriff's star. <laughs> Boundaries. Uh, placing boundaries. I mean, it's also reminiscent of this star in the hermit card. The star that you follow and the star that is there as, as a shield, right? The sheriff's shield. That which will protect you and uh, is a boundary for those things that you don't want in your life. The, the beliefs, the opinions, and the ideas about how you should live your life, what, you know, and even ideas bigger than that, how the world should be. And then the moon flower. And it's a beautiful moon and it, um, it makes me think too of strawberry moon, which is June's full moon. But June has two full moons. So there are two opportunities to see the light of the sun reflected fully. We just had one on the 21st and then we will have the second Capricorn full moon on July 21st. Now a blue moon is normally seen as two full moons within one calendar month. But I think since, you know, we, we work with astrology here, that we can see a blue moon as two full moons within one astrological sign. And so we are having a blue moon. And that makes me think of a watery moon And this moon, that's more pink, a little bit, there's a little bit more fire happening in here, more redness. The mixing of earth, air, fire, and water all together. All of the elements. So then we have sacred space. So there, there is, seriously, mm, there is a very strong um, suggestion that you, that you create this sacred space for yourself. 
and not in an actual physical, I mean, certainly you could have a space in your house that is, you know, your sacred space, but that you, right, you create a sacred space that is yours and you take it with you everywhere you go. So that your boundaries, your, what, what you, um, what you know to be right, your integrity, your wholeness is your sacred space. And to, to keep out um, these two cards, right? There's communication and also this uh, curiosity, right? With this crow coming in here, you know, and the whole of kind of the society of crows out there. Right, this is your sacred space. You're gonna take it with you wherever you go. And all of this stuff that's trying to come in from outside, all of this, you know, trying to put the walnut in your head. <laughs> um, and interestingly, below communication, actually we have direction, right? So knowing which, which direction are you going to go? Yours or other people's? Right? And so we have soar. Go. Go in your direction. See from your vantage point. Um, now this might... This might be a little difficult when you really do it. You might feel a little left out. I actually had a little bit of that experience yesterday. I was on a, a family text thread and the initial part was, was fun. It was great. It was a link to some great photos. But then it went off onto a different topic that I, I didn't want to participate in. I have very different ideas than everybody else in my family about this topic. And so I, you know, I just turned off notifications. And I felt right to do that. I did not contribute. I didn't. Um, I didn't make an attempt to contribute in kind of a bland way. I just stayed out of it entirely. But it did give me a, you know, a tiny little feeling of being left out. So this is just something that, you know, maybe part of this process. But this doesn't mean you know, that you are alone, Leo, because there are others that are like you, that have similar notions, that have a similar desire to play in the water, in the waters of emotion and consciousness and imagination and dreams. There are others who want to, right, release their wands to water the parched earth that they've been living in. You know, living just on trickles that are passed down. And so, what do you get when you do that? You get death. Transformation, the phoenix. Um, below that, you've got the Three of Cups. So both internal cohesion, internal harmony around all of your motivations, your needs, as well as external celebration. Um, and then the other side is this Five of Cups. So the ability as well to let stuff go 
and to keep only that which is really important to you. All of these other cups may have been things that you were told you were supposed to want, maybe even told yourself that you wanted them, or ways that you were supposed to be, or things you were supposed to feel. And now you can just let them go. Because you've heard the call, the call of judgment, calling you into, you know, this field of beautiful puppies. Um, to this, uh, right, to this watery energy in these blue butterflies. Now, judgment is traditionally associated with fire. So there is here also more of this fire and water combination. And then we have the Six of Cups, creating your world with your imagination. creating the world that you really want to live in and using that watery realm of imagination and dreams and your feelings as a guide, as your star. And then the Seven of Cups, the co-creation. Uh, both you and Source, you and your wider self, and possibly you and another person or other people. Having the energetic capacity, the emotional capacity to create. There is also here, there's the uh, Five of Cups, the Six of Cups, and the Seven of Cups. So there is a bit of a, uh, right, this sequence of things right, moving. So, advice. Two of Wands, choose. <laughs> Pick a direction. You gotta, right, you have to make a choice. A conscious choice. You can't just kind of hang around in the middle. Um, below this is the hermit repeating. Choose for yourself. And then the bottom of the deck is the Ace of Wands. And I love this Ace of Wands <laughs> because it kind of depicts the yeah, a little bit of fear, perhaps, that we can have when we suddenly grasp this fiery new wand. It can feel a little like much, like a lot. It can feel intimidating, perhaps, or intense. But in fact, it's just this little bird. Right? It's a small wand. You can absolutely take it and it will grow. Grow with you. Temperance. Taking off the mask. Taking off the mask. And also, um, you know, moderation. then this doesn't mean that you're, you know, just flat all the time and that you never have wonderful highs or lows. You know, that you don't feel massive enthusiasm and passion and rush to do something. But that, you know, there is a lot of time spent kind of in a moderate space where you can think, where you can feel clearly. get guidance clearly rather than always existing in some hyper state. And 
then this five of pentacles, which is so interesting. Um, here, I want to say this is not right about being alone. This is about immersing. Allowing yourself to be immersed in the waters. And then the fool, seeing things with fresh eyes, uh, waking up in the morning eager for the day, not having really um, delineated, boxed out expectations, allowing yourself to be surprised. Right, that fool energy of stepping out on the road with joy. And then the page of pentacles. And in this deck, this is my seer, Pythia card. Um, Cause she is, right, her hands are there next to her eyes and she has this mask. And then there's the goats and I see her as, you know, living on the side of a, mountain Greece with her goats and having a, you know, her own personal temple space that is, you know, perhaps under a great tree or on a giant stone or, you know, in a pool of water where she goes to receive guidance and oracular vision. So that sacred space, maintaining, having boundaries around that sacred space so that you can really know what is for you, so that you can release these wands, you can release the waters to flow throughout your life, Leo without anybody else's approval or um, admiration or anything else. That is kind of Leo, the Leo energy um, in its kind of in its highest or, or its most, most perhaps most perfect self um, is like the sun. It just, it shines. It doesn't do so because it wants admirers or because it needs them or because, you know, any of these things, it just is. People are attracted to it as, right, as we all orbit the sun. It's just natural. Yes. Easier said than done, I know. This wants to be real encouragement that this is absolutely possible, doable. Um, maybe you're even like just so close, just a shadow's width away from really totally embracing this energy. of really um, right, like sinking into the waters. Of um, really finding a good combination, a, a good uh, integration, a great working relationship with your moon, moon and sun together. Well, I hope this made sense, Leo, and that it is helpful. I wish you all the very, very best, and I will see you next time. So long. <laughs>